Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at radioactive decay. Um, so the key idea for this is to understand how nuclear uh, decay can emit radiation from a nucleus. Um, and there are going to be some equations that you are going to have to learn. Um, these are a weird kind of hybrid of a physics equation and a chemistry equation. Um, and it's going to show you how alpha, beta and gamma radiation work. Um, and we may look a little bit, well, we're going to look a little bit at why uh, nuclei actually decay, um, but you don't really need that for uh, IGCSE. So, if you remember, um, what we did in the lesson was we looked at this uh, NZ graph. So we have Z is the number of protons, and N is the number of neutrons. And when we plot a load of elements on there, we see that it follows this curve, which is called the stability curve. So if an element exists sitting on this blue line, then we call it stable. Um, and there are reasons for that, which I did discuss a little bit in the lesson, but I'm not going to do in this video because it'll just make it a bit too long. What you need to, well, again, you don't really need to know it, but what's useful to understand is that if I have, say, an element that exists over here or an isotope that exists over here, it's going to want to get to that blue line. And radiation, and, I, and emitting radiation, that's the way that elements get from being far away from the blue line towards the blue line. So if we look at the one that I've drawn here, you can see pretty clearly it has too many neutrons. So because it has too many neutrons, it's going to have to do something in order to get rid of neutrons or gain protons. And those are the different methods of uh, radioactive decay that we're going to talk about today. So the first type of radioactive decay is called alpha decay. Now, alpha decay is something that might happen um, in the middle of other decays. So let's say I have an element, uh, where could it be? Yeah, let's say I have an element here with this cross here. Um, in an alpha decay, what you have is a uh, parent nucleus that decays and emits an alpha particle and leaves behind or becomes a daughter nucleus. So in this case I have a uh, plutonium 240 that decays by alpha emission into uranium 236. So, you're, so plutonium is the parent, uranium is the daughter and it also emits an alpha particle. So on this graph uh, it's going to have dropped down by 2, and it's going to have dropped down by 2 in this direction. So you can see that my uh, element has taken itself a little bit closer to that stability curve. just got slightly closer to it. Um, and over time, by doing lots of different types of decay, uh, it can eventually find itself on the blue line. And when it does find itself on the blue line, it will be stable. Now, one of the things you can notice here the total number of nucleons in my plutonium atom is 240. If you look at my daughters, I have 236 nucleons in my uranium atom and 4 in my helium atom. So what we often uh, call it um, is we can say X and Z X so that, would might, so that would be the parent, and I'm going to say this is the nucleons, or number of nucleons, or the mass number, and this is the proton number. So as that decays, it's going to become x minus 4, z minus 2, y. So y would be the symbol for the daughter. And I can say that the, uh, the uh, nucleon number for the daughter will be the same as the nucleon number for the parent, take away 4, because I also have a 4 to helium atom, or you might write it as 4 to alpha particle. Um, and we're going to come on to those equations a little bit. Now, in beta decay, uh, beta decay is a little bit different. What happens 
is deep inside the nucleus, a neutron is able to turn itself into a proton. Why is crazy and weird, and we don't need to understand why. But if we think about this graph, if I have an atom that's sitting over here, well, the number of neutrons is going to go down by one, but the number of protons is going to go up by one. So the element finds itself back on this curve, um, and it's now stable. So in beta decay, we have a neutron becoming a proton, and in order to conserve charge, it has to emit an electron. If you think about it, a neutron is uncharged or neutral, and a proton is positive. So in order to, for weird rules of the universe, one of the weird rules of the universe is that we can't get rid of charge. So because we can't get rid of charge, we're going to have to get some negative charge created as well to balance out the positive charge from that proton being created. All I can do is promise you that if you do A-level, we kind of explain it a little bit more, but it's still weird. Um, and it's just one of those strange things. You just kind of have to accept that that's what, that's what happens. Okay. In terms of the equation, uh, we would write it as... Uh, uh, Sorry, uh, in terms of the equation, we would call it as uh, x, z. Did I say x on the first? I did say x. Okay, we'll carry on. We'll carry on using x. Um, x, z, x. So that was the starting numbers. Um, you can see here, because I've gained an extra proton, the proton number will be z plus one. But a neutron center of protons, so the total number of protons and neutrons has stayed the same. So it's the same number here and that will be y for the daughter, plus, um, and there's lots of different ways you can write it. Often you write it as 0 minus 1 beta, um, because a beta particle, it's like the opposite of being a proton. It's like it has a negative 1 proton number. Now, gamma decay is a little bit weirder. Um, gamma decay happens after another type of radioactive decay. And during gamma decay, what happens is the nucleus can have some leftover energy. And the way the nucleus gets rid of that leftover energy is to emit a photon um, which just gets rid of it. Um, so we go from the idea of an excited nucleus to a relaxed nucleus, and it emits a gamma ray. Um, so that would be written as x, z, x, and that becomes the, exactly the same nucleus. Nothing has changed, but you also have a gamma particle. We might write that as zero, zero, because the gamma particle has no protons and no neutrons, so it would be zero, zero. So just to sum up the uh, decay equations a little bit more pleasantly, they've used A there, which is a much better letter to use and a more standard letter, but I was having a brain fart earlier. Um, so we've got A, Z, X. Um, so this is the decay for alpha, this is the general decay for beta, and this is the general decay for gamma. Now on this picture they've used this idea of M. The M, that uh, means metastable, which you don't need to know about IGCSE, they won't include the M for you. So for you it would just be, uh, I'll just cross that out, and it would just be AZX decays into AZX plus a gamma ray. Um, so what should be pretty obvious to you um, is that in all of these, um, the idea, and let me just change colour, in all these equations, just a, a very similar to a, a chemistry equation, all the top line must be equal on both sides. So we need, during our decay equation, um, whatever's on the left-hand side, if I add up all of the A's, I must get the same on the right-hand side. And the same thing on the bottom. Yeah, all of the Z numbers, they have to add up to be the same on both sides of the equation. 
So now I'd like you to have a go at completing activity 52, Radioactive Decay, on Isaac Physics, um, and come back to me uh, when you've had a go. All right, so hopefully you're confident now with decay equations. I just want to think a little bit more about ionization because it's something that's quite useful uh, to think about for this context. So what I've got here is an example of how far uh, different things can penetrate. So alpha, alpha is big and very positive. Because it's big and very positive, it will steal electrons from the first thing it comes to. So alpha can't travel very far into a material because it will start ionizing stuff and just be uh, removed from, the, uh, from whatever it hits quite quickly. Beta can do some quite strange things, and as it hits, um, it can knock electrons off of things for a couple of centimetres. So beta can penetrate a bit further into a material than alpha. Um, and gamma, gamma can carry on causing lots and lots of ionisation, so gamma will go through most materials quite far. Um, so that's the idea of why alpha, beta and gamma can be stopped by different things. And again, just a little recap. Um, if we are causing ionization in your DNA, so we're changing the chemical structure of your DNA, that can cause problems for you health-wise um, because it can disrupt uh, the way that your cells normally work. So that's why ionizing radiation is dangerous. So the fact that uh, radiation is ionizing is really useful for a variety of medical and uh, industrial applications, um, but also obviously has serious safety implications. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you haven't already done so, what I'd like you to do now is just do a little bit of research on the uses of alpha, beta and gamma um, and the safety precautions. And what I'll give you is a little template for you to fill out uh, with these things in there. Okay, we're just going to finish with a couple of quiz questions uh, just for you to uh, feel confident with this. Thanks.